You've got a really important airport drop off in the morning at 6 a.m. You plug in at 9 p.m. thinking that you're going to get your state of charge up to 80% by the morning. Lo and behold, you wake up and you're still at 10% state of charge because you tripped the breaker during the middle of the night and you didn't know it. I don't know about you, but that was a major fear of mine before I got my first EV. So if you want to avoid that problem, stay tuned because I'm going to show you a way that you can reduce AC current flow to your car while you're charging either level one or level two. So you can prevent yourself from tripping your breaker unknowingly and hopefully you'll sleep a little better at night. All right, so the idea for this video came about from an experience that I kept having about six months ago at my old apartment complex. In that apartment complex, the building had a line of six garages underneath it, and all the electricity from all six of those garages was hooked up to one single circuit breaker box on the side of the apartment building. What kept on happening is that every time I plugged my ID4 into my garage's 120 volt outlet, I'd trip the circuit breaker for the entire line of garages, which disabled the electric garage door opener so that nobody could get in or out. So I was creating quite a ruckus. So I went searching for answers. How could I level one charge my ID4 in my garage's 120, 120 volt outlet without tripping the circuit breaker and ruining everybody's experience? And what I came up with is that the ID4, like every EV, has a capability in it to reduce the AC charging load so that you basically slow down AC charging while, while doing either level one or level two charging. And what happened is that when I activated that mechanism on my car, suddenly I was able to charge without a problem. Now this doesn't just apply to people living in apartment complex buildings. This applies to anybody living in a home where your electrical infrastructure is just old, outdated, maybe looks frayed, maybe you have inconsistencies in the way that electricity feeds your home. So here's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna plug in my car using the level one EVSC that came with the car. We're gonna see how fast it charges. Then on the car's infotainment system, I'm gonna activate the AC charge rate limiter and we'll see how much the charge rate slows down. Then I'm gonna to go to my nearest charge point level two chargers and I'm gonna do the same thing. Gonna plug in, show you how fast it's charging. Then we're gonna activate the AC charge rate limiter and see how much it slows down level two charging. All right, so let's plug on in. All right, and in we go. The indicator light turns white, it's hand shaking. Usually this is super fast and it's already green. All right, let's walk around the corner and see how fast we are charging. There we go. So we are currently at a state of charge of 46%. Good enough for about 131 miles of range. We just plugged in and we are charging at one kilowatt, a rate of one kilowatt, which is good enough for three miles per hour. Uh, my system also tells me that in order to get to 80%, I'd be done on Saturday at 12.02 a.m. Uh, for reference, currently it is Thursday at uh, 4.38 p.m. So uh, a little less than a day and a half, basically. So we're going to slow down our charge here. And we're, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's keep it on. We're going to go to settings. And here where it says reduce AC charging current, we're going to activate that. And I don't know how long it takes to actually kick in, but there, we did it. Let's go back up to charging, see if anything changed. Now, if you see here, uh, a couple things did change. Number, number one, it went from three miles an hour to two miles an hour. It's now also kind of pulsating between one kilowatt and uh, 0.5 kilowatts. So that tells me that we moved to definitely underneath one kilowatt as a charge rate. It also slowed up the charging by three hours. So before it said that we'd finish at, on Saturday at 12.02 a.m. Uh, now it's 9 a.m. So it slowed it up by, I, just, I don't know why I just said three hours. It slowed it up by nine hours. So that's quite a slowdown without limiting the AC uh, charge rate. It would have taken 32 hours to increase our state of charge from 46% to 80%. Now it's telling me that with this limitation to AC charge rate, it's going to take us an extra nine hours. So basically 41 hours to charge from 46 to 80%. What I'd like to do now is to check the exact charge rate using the VPeak OBD dongle. So I'm going to plug this in and then I'll show you our exact speed that we're charging at. Okay, guys, so here's where it gets interesting. I just turned off the AC charge rate limiter, which means right now we're charging at 
normal speeds for level one. I'm in the app for my car scanner, and uh, I'm gonna show you the exact speed that we're charging. And it's right there on toward the top right where you see DC battery power, and then it, the unit of measure is kilowatt. So we're exactly charging at 0.7 kilowatts. It's oscillating basically between 0.65 and 0.75 kilowatts. Now, I've got my infotainment center still on. So here, if you keep your eye on that DC battery power window, which is currently at 0.69 kilowatts, I'm going to flick on the AC reduction mechanism. So right now, I just flicked on the uh, AC charge rate limiter, and boom, DC, DC battery power falls from about 0.7 to about, about, about 0.53 kilowatts. So, you know, you're, you're looking at a, what, what is that, about a 25% reduction in overall charging speed. And I'm going to turn the uh, AC charge rate limiter back off so that we're going to hopefully come back up to the normal speed of 0.7. And there you go. So there you have it for level one charging. When you flick on the AC charge rate limiter on the ID4, you're looking at about a 25% reduction in AC charge speed. Uh, now that might be okay for some of you. Um, it really depends on your, your home's electrical infrastructure. If your circuitry is old and frayed, if your breaker box is really badly uh, outdated, if you can notice fraying, if you notice lights flickering in your house, that may be, may be an indication that your, your uh, place's electrical infrastructure is kind of wonky. And so you might want to take advantage of reducing AC charge rate on your EV. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the AC charge rate limiter on, and I'm going to leave my car plugged in overnight here for the next 15, 16 hours. And in the morning, I'll get up and I'll show you our, the current state of charge given this now overnight 15, 16 hour charge. And we'll compare it to my video that I posted about two weeks ago where I showed you what you can expect to get back in state of charge from a typical 15 hour overnight charge using regular speed level one. And good morning. You join me 15 hours later, car has been charging successfully overnight using that uh, AC charge rate limiter that reduces the AC current load going to the car. So uh, let's go check the state of charge. Okay, so here we go. After 15 hours of overnight charging, my state of charge has been increased from 46% to 60%. So an increase of 14 percentage points of state of charge in 15 hours. Now let's compare that to what happened last time when I posted a video where I overnight charged my car for 15 hours using unlimited, unrestricted level one charging. And I increased my state of charge by 18 percentage points from 41% to 59%. Last night, I activated the AC charge rate limiter to slow down my AC charge load while I'm charging and I increased my state of charge over that same 15 hour period from 46% to 60% or an increase of 14 percentage points on my state of charge. Now that's a 22 to 23% reduction in energy that my car got back in that same 15 hour period. Now that 20% reduction in AC current load might be enough for some folks to avoid a uh, circuit breaker tripping especially if you have an old breaker box that's really susceptible to being overloaded, or if you share garage space with multiple people where you're all pulling from the same circuit breaker. Okay, I'm satisfied with the level one side of things, but I still want to see how much the AC charge rate limiter slows down level two charging. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to run some errands, and then you're going to meet me at my local level two charge point charger, and... Um, we're going to see how much we can get that thing to slow down. And you join me at what was supposed to be my local charge point level two charging station. However, all eight chargers were being used and I don't have time to chase them around. So instead, I pulled around to my hyper local. This is literally right down the street from me. And it's in the basement of a uh, apartment complex where I don't live. So hopefully I don't get kicked out here. They actually have two guest uh, level two chargers by PowerFlex. Now this brand is rare. The only other place I've seen PowerFlex level two chargers is at LAX airport in the, I think it's in the long-term parking deck. Um, so we're gonna get out. I do happen to have the app for PowerFlex because once upon a time I did use these. Uh, and we're gonna see if they, they still work. Okay, so it looks like I was actually able to get 
the uh, charger to activate using the PowerFlex app as I almost fall. So let's bring it around the side here and plug on in. Indi indicator light is white, it's handshaking, it is now green. Well, that's good. So let's check the inside of the car. Under we go. And let's see what we're charging at. All right, so far, it looks like it's ramping up. We're currently charging at one and a half kilowatts. Now you can see it popped up to six kilowatts at 24 miles an hour. All right, it looks like we probably hit the max rate for this charger. This is a level two charger. Now you can quickly compare this to the level one charging that I was doing where we were doing a little under one kilowatt. Right now we're at six kilowatts. Uh, let's see what happens now when we put on the AC reduced load. So there's that reduced AC charging current mechanism. We're going to flick that on, reduce our AC load, and let's go back to charging and see what just happened. And it just dropped us severely right back down to that 1.5 kilowatts. Now I do want to check uh, my car scanner to see the precise charging speed that we're at because I'm not entirely sure that I believe that. So hang on a second. Okay, so now we're in my car scanner app so we can get a precise look at the uh, charge rate that we're at. And you can see, once again, on that top right, the DC power, uh, DC battery power window shows that we're at 1.34 kilowatts, which is surprising. Wow, look how much reducing the AC charging current cuts the uh, charging rate on level two charging. It cuts it by 75%. So let's do this. Let's flick the, the uh, reduced AC charging mechanism back off. So we're going to turn it off and hopefully we're, we'll return back up to about six kilowatts. So it's now off and we are climbing, not six kilowatts. Oh, well, there you go. Just took it a second. Okay. So now it returns back to just under six kilowatts. Again, this is level two charging. So um, it is interesting to see that activating the reduced AC charging current mechanism on the ID4 reduces level two AC current to the car by 75%. And look, I'm not sure if that's always the case. I don't know that that would be the same thing with the charge point level two chargers, but unfortunately I couldn't get there today and I just don't have any time to get back there. Um, so for today, it, we at least saw that on level one charging, activating that reduced AC char charging current mechanism on ID4 reduces level one charging uh, rate by 20 to 25% and it reduces level two charging by 75%. I want to close with this, that this reduced AC charging current mechanism that you can activate on the ID4 and your EV as well, it only works on level one charging and level two charging because those are the two types of EV charging that use AC current. This will not work at DC fast charging stations. Of course, I don't know why you would want to do that. If you learned anything from today's video, make sure to like, and share and subscribe and I will see you next time.